Okay. We're gonna do a Niskin over the snow blower. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're going to set up to collect a water sample. We want to try to see if we can capture some of that microbial flock material, that white uh, flocky stuff that was coming out of the, the vent in front of us. It is back up. Okay. Great. Yep. Yep. So we're going to take a. Uh, it's called a Niskin sample, which is a uh, a bottle that captures a, about five liters of water, and the pilots are going to try to position themselves right over that uh, diffusive flow vent that we saw that had a lot of microbial flock that was being released into the water column. See it? Yes, please. All right, firing Niskin one. Thank you. Niskin one fired. The microbial flock. Okay, so now we're going to try to find a nice squishy spot. We're going to pick up the temperature probe again and measure the sediment. So if you want to talk right in the middle, maybe that would make that in the Yeah, we, we'll see how um, so we can use the temperature. I doubt it's a two Just a coreable spot. We want a couple of fish bores. Let's take a look. Yeah, that might that might work. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that's what we want to. Yep.
I see orange here. Where's the blue? Blue is uh, off Just screen, the but it's over the ridge. Uh, yeah, I want it's flat enough to, or is it more? Depending on what's below, I can find another site. Um, it's seven and below. Because you're looking, are you looking for like to get the whole core, or you just want to get flat? No, I want the whole core. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's put the punch probe into it. Seems like otherwise I can go. Okay. Like there's some shimmering in the front here. All right, so we took some temperature measurements directly in the diffuse flow, <laughs> and now we are going to try to measure the temperature in the sediments. Seems like there's some pretty hard bottom below. And these temperature probe measurements serve two purposes. So one is to give us some, some uh, of the context uh, for the microbial samples we're collecting, but also is letting us know whether or not we'll have any success with push coring. So a lot of times you don't know if there's uh, hard ground below this thin veneer of sediments, and it looks like that's the case here. We're barely pushing in. Yeah. OK. No. <laughs> No more slurping. Okay. All right. So the temp. What is the temperature you're getting? Are you the? Okay. So it's yeah. Yeah. No, that's the highest you're saying. Yeah. Sixteen. Twenty. Now there is a little vent here too. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a little bit of shimmering water. Forty-three. Forty-five. Four. Fifty. 51. Is that um, the first, second, is that the second little notch in the temperature probe? The first, or one, the so first one, so like three and, cent, three and a half centimeters. 62. And look, you're sort of releasing some new flow. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's okay. We should, we should, uh, Try to find. So, what was the highest 62. temperature? Sixty-two. Okay. Nine seventy seventy one. What's that depth? Seventy three. The depth? Yeah. Thirty six fifty meters. No, oh, the probe depth, sorry. Uh, also looks like it's about three and a half. Eighty. So those are those copepods. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, 
So those little white, or sorry, little red uh, organisms you're seeing running around here, these are um, copepods. It's a new species, I believe, that uh, we were able to collect in 2018. And they like to congregate right in that warm flow. So we're gonna measure the temperature. So it's 17, 18. Thirty-six. Yeah, it's not nearly as hot not here. Nearly as hot. Yeah. Heavy? Yep. Thirty thirty-seven. Okay. So now we're gonna try to fly to find an area that uh, we can get a core. We can get a core. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, <laughs> you're at a little disadvantage <laughs> just hopping in, but um, oh, we this was all hard ground, so we weren't able to actually core here. So hold on to the yeah, we're gonna set probe. The probe. Yep. Yeah, we're on the yeah, slope. Yeah, tells me we're on. Don't yeah. Don't we need like a flat depression area to take the core. Uh, do we have to fly around and try to find it? What we do is come up and see all the mats when they come up. And then we stay low to the ground. So we can try to find the black spot. Okay. So Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do. All right, so we're driving around. We're going to look for... So just a shout out. Hi, Anna. Glad to have you with us. Um, we were out here with the Nautilus in 2017, and Anna was uh, one of the co-chief scientists. And we're back at the little area just the east of the Matterhorn. If you remember that, there were three little chimneys out there. And uh, we're just exploring that mountain. All right, that was Dr. Z. He's hanging in the background here. So 
So right now we're just surveying the area. We're looking for a uh, potential place to take some push cores so we can look at the uh, microbial mats and the underlying microbial communities in the sediments, uh, understand a little bit about the geochemistry and uh, yeah. All right. What would you like to call that? Um, let's call it potential barite. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about this area here? Is that? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and so when we. We don't want to come around this area. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Right. yeah. That looks pretty hard out there. I take it back. That's pretty slow. In slim. here. But there, I think you can do it. Yeah. Want to get another shot down on this area right here? Yeah. Okay. So it's right in front of you. So like right, right in this. Oops. This, right there. this yeah, or right. here maybe? Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm not sure. Outer patch right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it might be ponding yeah. there. It's iffy, but it's there. Yeah. So when we, um, when we do the... We, do we want to leave enough, potentially enough real estate that we can take two push cores there too, so maybe not, if we, not, yeah, yeah. That makes The other thing I was you're sitting. Do we put the um, lasers on so we know? How I guess you'll come. Yeah. Well, so then, what you want to do? There's a swimming worm in the middle of this. Is it just a worm? Yeah. There's a little uh, pair of alvanilla off the side there. And there. Oh, no. no, definitely here. A couple of them. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. More copepods. All right, to give you all some spatial context, those two green laser points you see there are about 10 centimeters, or exactly 10 centimeters apart. So we have incredible capabilities of zooming to see uh, exquisite detail on the seafloor. Pretty amazing when we think that we're, you know, 3,650 meters below the surface. All right, should we, should we go for it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's let's go um, to the right side of this this patch here. Um, if we can, yeah. Yep, that seems good. So we're going to take a temperature probe reading and sort of the grayish gray, granular material. It's hard, hard. Hard. Okay, how about in the white? Let's see how okay. that. Also hard bottom. Okay. Uh, now let's let's keep keep poking. We'll see. <laughs> let's just try try off to the right just to see if there's. Also hard. Okay, how about how about all the way to the left? Let's see if we can. Uh, okay, or as far as you can reach, we'll just see if it's beyond where we poked already. So it's like 10, 10 centimeters. Oh, okay. All right. Let's uh, let's let's let's. I think. Why don't we um, why don't we hold off for now on the push coring and okay. let's. Let's head over to Matterhorn, maybe, and do okay. some rock sampling. Are you going to want the probe when we get over there? Yeah. Or, yeah, so keep the probe in that arm? Well, actually, no, I go ahead and stow, stow the probe. Okay. Yeah. All right, so no, no corable no spots here. I think it's going to be, you know, kind of a... 
hunt and peck to see if we can find a right. spot. All right, I see there were some questions about the kinds of uh, worms we were observing. So there was, there's a few in the shot here. Um, in the backdrop, we see big bushes of Oasisia tube worms. So they have the little red plume uh, on a, uh, a chitinous uh, tube. You can see them in the upper backdrop and then uh, at the far left corner you'll see there's some little palm frond looking worms in the microbial mat and those are called para alvanelids so they're a different type of worm species uh, they have uh, symbionts on the outsides of their bodies that help to uh, use the hydrogen sulfide in the fluids and they're one of the um, highest temperature tolerant organisms, uh, animals known. So these are the parrot alvanelids. Let's head on over to Matterhorn. We see Eakin is online. Good to see you, Eakin. We miss you. Wish you were out here with us. We are indeed on the Falcor. And it's a little bittersweet. So this is the last science leg of uh, the RV Falcor. After this leg, they're going to be sailing uh, potentially over to Spain to start building their new ship.
All right, we can see up online is a, a 3D projection of the photo mosaics that were collected in 2018. And these are draped over the underlying bathymetry so you get a sense of the, the topography and scale. And so what we're looking at here is the area that we just uh, we're looking at, which is a smaller mound that's to the uh, northeast, or sorry, south southeast of uh, Matterhorn. And it was a really beautiful site. Uh, we've taken to calling it Wonderland. Uh, we'll see if that name sticks. Uh, but we'll definitely be coming back here later in uh, Lake 3. Indeed, we're just starting uh, leg three here, so uh, never fear, we'll be diving for uh, another several uh, days. I think we have another 10 day dives after this. And we will be visiting some of the same places that uh, were looked at at leg two, as well as exploring some new interesting features that were um, imaged on the map that we think might be new areas of hydrothermal venting in the vicinity of Pescadero Basin. Going over the ridge. A little ridge. Ridge. Little ridge. Yeah, that was. I saw one went in like one centimeter. About five centimeters of the fist. Maybe that's why we don't have you see there the red couple of over there. Yeah, and parallel. So you had got great video of them. Yeah, so that also, if we need to collect some, we could do that there. Yeah, we could do it up there. At the Oily site, yeah. No, we were we were watching in the lounge. Oh, great. When you were looking at the couple of Yeah. 
All right, we're pulling up to Matterhorn here. It's a spectacular event site. Gets even better when we get towards the top. All right, so so we're going to collect some rock samples here, um, and I see. So we want to look for. We're going to do. We're going to do rocks first, but we're going to collect them um, near the base and near the the midpoint of the chimney, if it's possible, and then up near the top. Okay. So. I want to take a survey. Yeah, let's see if we can find a nice rock. Yeah. So we can see if any of these look promising. If they have an anemone on it, it's an extra bonus for Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> how about this? Which one? How about this one here? Is that a possibility? Yeah, Greg would be interested in the, if, even if they're not the vent anemone, if they're the zoanthids, he'd be interested. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're in here. <laughs> so Sh Shauna thinks these might be uh, zoanthids and anemones. Oh, yeah, great. Fantastic. <laughs> Actually, this, this other one also looks... Which one do you prefer? Uh, this guy looks kind of nice, too. There's a lot of yeah, diversity on it. Yeah, I the one on the left, but um, either is fine. Okay. Because that has the vent anemones on it, but this one is fine, too. You, you choose. It's ge geology. Okay. I kind of like the one on the right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Overruled. Uh, there's some... But, Okay, so we want to try to get this guy, if that will work. Maybe we'll see if we can get a nice in-situ context picture for it. Oops. Oops, sorry. Okay. No problem. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, we're okay. Got overexcited. Fantastic. All right, so we're at the base of Matterhorn. We're going to collect some rock samples. Okay. All right, so these lasers are 10 centimeters apart, just to give you some scale context here. Are you going to pick up the whole thing? Because there's some really nice snails. <laughs> that... Oh. Yes. Like no, no. Uh, what do you mean, the whole thing? Right. Oh. Those are new, right? Those are... Uh, uh, what are the ones with the ridges? Kanoya? Oh, no, no, no. There's a ridge from that. Oh. So, is that Lamana? The ridge? Lamana is smooth. Leave us. Sorry, leave us a do you do you want me to zoom in on yeah. something yeah. specific? What do you want? Uh, to the right. Oh, they are ridge promontories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll just get, uh, the promontories snails. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, this little anemone that's out, the and down a little bit. Yeah, that's right there. That's nice. What's this? Uh, okay. You good? Yep, good. Look at that nice pink, pinkish mat. As a microbiologist, it's rare to be able to actually see the microorganisms on the seafloor. Yeah. Beauty. But these are some of the, what we call the giant sulfur bacteria, and they are 
typically feed on, on hydrogen sulfide, and they use either oxygen in the seawater or nitrate, and that gives them chemical energy to make ATP grow. All right. Can I shout out to my student, Rachel? Hi. <laughs> are those purpley opalescent looking guys scale worms? Indeed, they are. <laughs> they are scale worms. Uh, they are uh, part of the genus Penelae polynoe. And, uh, you know, as a scientist, it's rare to be able to go to a uh, study site and actually see an organism that is named after you but this is uh, this is my namesake here Penelae polynoe orphanae uh, named by Greg Rouse and uh, as a microbiologist I never thought that I would have a beautiful worm named after me but I've grown quite fond of this little little guy here and uh, we'll see a lot of them <laughs> I don't want to look at the anemones. <laughs> what? No. Okay. All right. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fantastic. All right. Are you going to be my rock collector? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So we're we're interested in this. The rock that I'm putting, yep. Do you want to take the lasers off? Because there's a big green dot. Sure, we can take the lasers off. Okay. Sorry. Take them off. Okay. Is that good enough for you? So Connor was asking whether or not the uh, pink and blue scale worms were uh, similar or different, and uh, I believe they are different morphotypes of the same uh, species of, of scale worms, so they come in a variety of different uh, colors. Is that right? The, That's the correct. pink and the blue. All right. Greg Rouse has confirmed. Adam, shout out to Avery Hiley, who uh, was the student who led that study naming the species for Penelope polynoid. And she also named one for Shana Gofridi, who's also on this cruise. Yes. As well as one for Elvis, because we had nicknamed these worms Elvis worms for many years before we found out there were several species. It's also <laughs> And it looks like the iridescence is um, the bluer they are, the thicker their scales are, and it's the uh, light going through the scales on the blue ones, um, iridescing mm. more than the younger. Nice grab. Yeah. We're going to put it in the bio box. Wow. That is a nice looking rock. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be my, I wouldn't mind being named after the worm. <laughs> Okay, you can have one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do.
Okay, so we're looking at G. Well, we, we put it on side G. And I don't know, so it's G and H. We have G and H, but there are three and four on here. So we'll just have to. Is this rock one? Uh, yeah, this is going to be rock one. Let's call G and H three and four. Yes. Yeah. So under. Yeah. Somebody do a sample. I'm waiting for it to go away. It's going in. It's in. <laughs> so let's see what it says. Or it does. Yeah. So, so G is three. Nice. So, and we noted this is at the base. Yeah. Okay. And the depth. Uh, 3649. 3649 depth. Or, or, wait, no. Trust in the other. No. Okay. We're writing down more intensity. Fantastic. This, this is also um, Biobox 3 on the sample logger. Okay. G. It, that's it's here. Oh, so the G and H and three and four. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got it. We're getting anything else you find. We're gonna we're gonna head part way up. What would you rather have here? Would you rather hmm? have something here, or do they need this here? I don't know. No, we don't. We don't. Need you that. don't need this here. We can use this one. It's fine. Would there be something else that would be helpful here? Perhaps. Doppler, the uh, sonar, or down facing cam. Down facing cam could be. Well, I can I can see it here though. Yeah. So I'm not, you're good. Yeah. I'm okay. okay right now. Okay. Thanks. Just thinking. Yes. We'll think more about it. So now you want to go like halfway up? Halfway up, and we'll okay. see if we can. We might have to use the. So here's a question for you: Do would it be better yeah. to have a clan scoop at the ready? Or well, get to deal with that. Do you want to scan can. up first? Yeah. Um, we can. Like we can. Yeah, because you think it's. Oh, is he, uh, he says this is seven meters tall. Yeah. Structure. Yeah. So midway is three and a half meters. Here. Yep. I mean, ish. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Wherever we can find a rock that looks like it's easy to, to break off. Yeah. Problem is, I can't go, I can't zoom up much higher than that. So, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. you want to kind of go around it now? Yeah, I mean, some of, some of these ledges could could be good. Yeah. Yeah, do you think you could grab something like that? Or we can, we could... Um,
<laughs> yeah, any anything that looks potentially easy to grab, like maybe you think some of these up here are possible? I think, yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, pop the lasers on. Yeah. Or that top, how about the top one? You think that's a possibility? Or that, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that looks... Actually, are we near the top, though? This We're is, close yeah. to the top. Yeah, so we could grab that one, but that would be our top sample, not the midpoint. That would be that would be a lovely sample if we could get it. Um, so right now we're thinking one of those in there. This this um, top, if we can get this guy, we should try. We want to go ahead and try for that one. Now. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Ah. There. There. I'll leave it out. Yep. Yep. No problem. Okay. Are you um, documenting the heading that we're facing to that's in Fort Way harder to sample worms than anemones here. Yeah. Than we did at Wonderland. Yeah. This is tricky. Yeah. It is. Structure stable, Victoria. <laughs> Are we stable? No. We're not. No. Okay. No. Just hoping these things stable. Don't oh, you're don't hoping the whole thing is stable. Us. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't don't knock it over. <laughs> All right, we we can move if uh, if that's a worry. <laughs> I definitely don't want to knock one Matterhorn over. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go down an infamy bend on the SD. Yeah. <laughs> make me nervous now, sorry. <laughs> Soft touch. Yeah, we're just resting. We're resting. <laughs> Look at these oasis, you look so sad down here. Yeah. Uh, we bridge. Yeah, go ahead, bridge. I'm just going to continue to bring my heading around the server as the wind's dropping, the current is becoming the dominant force, so yeah. just slowly bring it around. No problem at all. How many degrees do you think? Uh, probably at least 10. 10 degrees, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. no problem. We'll start with that. Thanks, Luke. All right, thanks. Oh, if uh, if you're, yeah, maybe the clamps. Will that work with the clam scoop? It's gonna crumble. Yeah. Like under here. I think so. The other one was super. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm about to just shove it under the worms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can see it. I can see it. Oh. These green anemones are a different species. 
It's got little green ones. Oh, yeah. So, really cute. cute. Yeah, that looks good. Can I, can I camera? Fantastic. Do you need the camera for the, um, for the clamp? Okay, all right. Yeah, you can't see was saying the you have to take it off auto focus when you try to get through. Just go back a little bit. It looks like a different, um, definitely a reddish, more reddish. Yeah. Look at the bacteria dripping in the yeah, middle. Yeah, that's so amazing. Cool. I wonder if that's part of it. Yeah, I could take it off autofocus and see. Fewer Dorvalets around here. Yeah. You think these little green anemones are different? These oh, yeah, I, had, I didn't notice those. Oops. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely different. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see. Be little babies of bigger green ones. You are zooming in on your worm again. <laughs> you can look at the Arkanoes. Arkanoes. Fireworm. See? Get my get my you know invertebrate get my invertebrate badge. <laughs> okay. Imagine all this on the bottom of the ocean, out of view. Yeah. There's a little stream of bubbles yeah. going up around that rock. Look at it. I think it's uh, hot water flow. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, so close. I didn't notice that at first. There's a lot of hot water yeah. coming out around that thing. This over here too. Yeah. All right. We ready to go? Try it. We're gonna try a scoop, right? Let's try a scoop it. Scoop. I think we have Mama Bear scoop. <laughs> <laughs> we should have gotten Papa. Mm -hmm. For this kind of stuff, in the yeah. event, you should take Papa Bear. Yeah. Uh, All right, so the pilots are getting out an instrument we call the clam scoop. We are not going to use it for clams. We're actually going to see if we can collect some of this more friable chimney material that uh, we see up above that's in the shimmering water. And we know from prior experience, we've tried to grab this with the manipulator, it just crumbles. And so we're just going to uh, preemptively assume that's going to happen. and. I use this clam scoop to try to capture some of the pieces. Uh, it's, 
right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's this this rock back here. Yeah. Yep. Nicely done. Jared, Jared for the win. <laughs> okay, um, I don't have enough room to pour gel. Or mm -hmm. to pour this so we can try. Okay. That is a beautiful rock. Can we um can we hold it up to take a uh, Yeah, just like just like that. Perfect. Is that R2? R2. Look at that beauty. What do you think's going on there? That is a nice rock. Weird. Look it's still still shimmering <laughs> yeah it is still shimmering. Yeah. Oh. oh wow that is a Look cool rock is that have something to do with salinity too or just the uh i don't temperature wow it could yeah it so could be it could that. be steaming yeah steaming Source. underwater yeah. rock still steaming wow. there's this is fluffy when you just yeah that. this is all very so, soft yeah so that might be that, like that other more gelatinous mat that we found last time. Well, we're very excited about this sample. Heck yeah! <laughs> All right. Don't count your chickens just yet. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it in a box. <laughs> Right. Don't count your rocks till they're in the box. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> as the old saying goes. That's right, as, as the saying goes. <laughs> Indeed, oh. Connor, this could not have gone any better. I agree. You should watch some of the 2018 videos. But this is this is the advantage of being able to return to these sites. And we you know, we spent a lot of time while we were in quarantine at the <laughs> at the Hyatt reviewing those old tapes and trying to strategize what the best way might be to collect the samples at the different places in the event. Um, the other compartment of, I guess, compartment H? Four. Yeah. Four. Four. Right yep, hand. please. Yeah. Yeah. Do you call it four or you call it H? Uh, you knew what it was. Hmm? I don't know, can we, is it possible to set it in or is it a dropping kind of, okay, that's no problem. <laughs> All right, that's a great sample. Thank you. You might not want to contaminate those two samples. No. Close? Can you put a mid one in a cover? Yeah, we might be able to. Keep them separate. Yeah. We're going to, um, we're going to drop down, part way down the... We will probably use the scoop again, and we'll, we might try to put it in a quiver, if depending on how how big it is. Quiver's open. Oh, there's a quiver open. Yeah, right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think we're. 
So let me get a sense of how how far from the top we were here. So this is the big tube worm bush at the top. So, and that's the very Put the lasers on now? Yeah, let's put the lasers on. Lasers? Yes, please. Lasers on. Hmm. There they okay, are. There's, one. there's one. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so that's 10 centimeters. Okay, so let me get it somewhere. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll try to calculate for you. Okay, so. Do you think it was here? It was right under, yeah, right. Okay. I'll put the lasers on where we collected it. It's right in there. Oops. Hmm. I can't see the right one. There. There. Uh, oh. Oh. Back to the right. There, there we go. Okay. You got a shot? Yep. Okay. Great. Definitely hot, though. Definitely hot. <laughs> All right. Are there, are there any down here? In this area that you could you could pick up. Oh, very possible. Okay. Then you wouldn't have to move. <laughs> yep, you can take the camera. Camera. Did you do this yet? What? Do you do the biscuits? Just one. In the snowboard. Are you? Do you want to keep those discreet when we come up? Just one we want to keep discreet. Um, the snow lower. Um, but the other one discreet. will fire. The others will fire. Yeah. And is it going to be filtered? Snow yes. Blower? Uh, snow blower. Uh, snow blower. Uh, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I was thinking maybe trigger two more here. For an enemy one. Yeah. So that makes yeah, we can. You want me to just trigger it as we are here? Or you want yeah. me to hang over the. Okay. I don't know. It doesn't matter. How about how about this one here? Yeah, like there, because that seems like a nice little. Can you um can you dump the stuff that's in there? Just uh. Go ahead, preach. It's gonna bring heading around about another ten degrees to start. Roger that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, one of those um, that seemed like it had more of a knob to it might be able to knock in. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, good job. Fantastic. You are so hired. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> I'm going to take you home with us. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we are. We have forever. In the quiver, if so we can't. Do you think, unless it's too big? Um, I think it'll go. Give me angle. I think it'll go. Okay. We'll try. Similar I really dig the angles on your scoops. I wish you yeah. had out. the angles.
much out of them more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Put the porch out too. Photo. Yeah. Can I zoom in on the uh, stuff? Photo yeah. Photo Is it okay? Yeah, You're in a nice position here. For her. A little bit of staining, huh? Yeah. Whoop. Too much. Cool. Looks also good. Very I think you got some anemones on there too. So R3 and Q1. R3 and Q1. Now we just need to figure out how far that is from the oh, this one. top. This one's farther. So yeah. they estimated 60, 40 to 6, 50 to 60 for the other one. Sir, did your ring in the um, in the ring in the milk thing? Yes. Oh yeah, I saw it earlier. Good point. While we're sitting here. Yeah. yeah it's, the, the, it's that one disc that you see in the top view. Okay. Top view. No, the top down camera. Yeah. Which I have a big version of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's the two cores. Yeah. And then that. Oh, they gotta kind of reach in. Okay. That, that's the monkey fist for the silver. Okay, I see it. Yep. Come on, baby. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. You know, it's not not scheduled. All right, successful. Yeah. So, so in yep. So in that um, where we have the clam scoop, we have that little ring that um, has the monkey fist. Yep. Jared made it. We're going to uh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna try to you know loop some. Okay. Oh, is this yeah? So wherever you put the clam scoop, just don't put it on top of the ring as so, long. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so could you estimate the distance or you're saying between that sample and the lower one? Yeah. Are they both in you? Uh, or did we move? We, moved. we just went up the same side though, right? Yeah. Or you could Well the other one was definitely at the base. Yeah. yeah. But I'm thinking well, I mean you can pan away when you, when you when you pull away, maybe take yeah. a few photographs. But we can we could try to piece it together, right? Because we yeah. kind of know the context here. So if I yeah. pan up, yeah. we can use the lasers. Right. We might be able to work our way up from the two from the push. Right. The upper two from. That's true. Challenge for the scientists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting to see how this goes. I know. <laughs> what do you call this? What's a, does it have a number? Or a, yeah. what's a um, it's a good hmm. question. Uh, are there going to be more? There are going to be more, so we do need it. And I need it. 
I don't want you to put a label What's he going for? on it, but he's gonna he's closing the lid. What do it's the term put a label on it? Yeah. It's just like oh, look at it, it's great. Uh but we're only doing one for Matterhorn, so the only problem is if you go a swing past like Diana's van and Clapton, we can put them in different places. Right. On the vehicle. So, but I'm now trying to think of like sample ID for them. What are the IDs for sample So, you want to go grab this? Yep. <laughs> this is a new, this is a new, brand new technology. <laughs> yes, yes, high, high tech. Here we go. 3D printed room. Or CA for polarization. It's not a polarization for it, it's a break. It's supposed to. CR? Oh, what do you call it? Polarization rays. Oh, no, no, no. They have the C number? No, like just the numbers on it. Like the C R one. Yeah. But C R might be Costa Rica. Yeah, C R is going to be. 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 Have to be I was, I was just going to say, white one. Just call it a ring. Yeah. Or SP. Oh, no, that's a ring. I think you should call it a ring. And it's the first one, so you should be good. Right, we'll call it a ring. That's my. Oh, I think those scoops on. The scoops on top of it? Or well, but it's, it's, it's also zip tied, so it's going to be. Oh, it's zip tied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to go up to the very top. We're, we're ready to go. Fly up to the top, and there should be.
Yep. And see if we can target this diffuse flow. Does that look good to you, Serge? Yeah. There? Okay. Like right around here? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Perfect. Right? Yeah. Kudos from a geologist. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. A volcanologist, no less. <laughs> Thank you, Dave Flake. But the morphology of the scoop actually really helps a lot. Yeah, yeah that's I a good. I think we should make one for the, the rickets. Yeah. Because the rickets, it's just like totally. a round. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. remember everything. It's really hard to get together. Yeah. Better. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so, I gotta say, Serge, you know. All right. Hopefully it's here in April. I know. But I don't know. When, <laughs> no, we're going to pick it up in a couple days. In a couple oh. days. Yeah, we're not leaving these. We're not leaving this out. Yeah, little yeah. I hope it's yeah. your Wednesday. I hope it's your Wednesday. All right. You just have to find a little nestling spot in the world. Why is it metal? Why is it metal? Uh, -huh. uh, as opposed to any other kind of. Substance. So you all may be wondering. With, that that's fine if it'll stay. Been, like, can you can you hook it on a uh, <laughs> two worm? For microbial, for microbial pollination, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. And then will you just wipe off the ring and that's see good. if it's on there? Like well, that's kind of the If it'll stay? Yeah, great. Wonderful. Yep. That's, we're just gonna, yeah, we're going. Yes, Connor's right. Okay. And then back out a little bit. Just to get the whole, yeah, the right there. Oh. I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. Hold on. So in the past, they have... They've had stuff in the middle, so the carbon kind of like grew around these little yeah, couples, but what I'm hoping yeah. is that even the rate is fast enough. Okay. Thanks for the like, So you may be wondering oh, what we're doing with this ring here, where uh, this is a stainless steel ring, and we're interested in whether or not we can see any uh, mineralogical precipitation in the short term. So since we have the opportunity of uh, revisiting this site in a, a week or so, we're going to come back and uh, pick this up. And we also have some longer term experiments we're going to deploy uh, with the anticipated return in April with the folks at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute on the Western Flyer. That's a good spot. Yeah. We'll have to measure the temperature when we come back. Yes. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. I wonder about that. Okay. Temporal variability. Thanks. That's good information. How's it going? All right. So we do the gas pipe. No. We're going to go <clears throat> go down to the well, kind of base and we're going to see if we can collect the push core. And then when Z comes back, <laughs> we will revisit. So there's there's the copepods are in here too. Look at that. Because I really do think you don't want them in the box. You've got delicate material. It's gonna move around. So I think if you could get them and fit into the quivers. But he also said grab the worms one more time. Of the of these over here. That because that'll be sticking. Do you want me to zoom in on the? So that thing could be flatter, and that could be yeah. a little bit smaller. Like the perfect uh, the, that's great. The, the cord yeah. or the wire. It's flatter. To see 
to have the stopper of the quick focusing on the Yeah. Well, Look at all the copepods too. They're all. Like, uh, to I'm going to go up soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Would there be a way to kind of like. All right. So. Uh, maybe. In the field of view, we see, uh, of course, the Oasisia, which is the dominant tube worm species that is uh, at the Alka vent field. But you also see all of these small kind of uh, tannish yellow polychaetes. Those are Dorvaleids, and they are some of the champions for um, sulfide tolerance. We find them in methane seeps, cold seeps, as well as in these, these hydrothermal uh, areas and you can see they're quite abundant. Uh, we don't know why they're in close association with the two worms, but I bet they're they're getting out of the the most intense uh, flow of the of heat. The red color is hemoglobin. Somebody asked on YouTube. Oh yeah, so the the color of the plumes on the Oasisia is uh, a hemoglobin, and this is uh, just similar to the kind of hemoglobin that we have, uh, except for it's it's modified so that it can. Uh, not only bind oxygen, but also bind hydrogen sulfide that gets delivered to its symbionts that live in an organ called the trophosome. And that uh, those symbionts then use oxygen and the hydrogen sulfide to fix carbon dioxide, just like a plant, uh, and produce organic carbon that then feeds the worm. Yeah, and then he said, how quickly do they grow? Um, Riftia grows a meter per year, but we don't really know about Oasisia. Probably they grow quickly. They're in a pretty ephemeral habitat, changing habitat, but we don't really have an idea of how fast they grow. Um, these are the breakout rickets. Their bio tubes are much bigger. That's right. Yeah, it's just this one. Yeah. This one is the one again. But the next one's like a bio tube. Still don't know. I think what we were going to do is to each dive, like, actual thing. So we go, oh. probably want to make them up, you know, plant mm -hmm. and okay. a new one. So for here, I don't know, so we have to get some more. So from that, no, no. It's all worth. It's like a it's all free trial. Yeah. 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 Incredible. That will go forever. Swarm. Do you need an. Look at that microbial mat. What? It's like a marshmallow. I know. Yeah. Who needs relief? Um, that's true. Should I could. I did want to get plan? some push cores. What's that? Oh, yeah, you guys are going to eat. We're, we're supposed to eat. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, we'll come back up here later with Z whenever he's ready, but. For now, I'd like to go back down to the base and see if we can find the place we can push for. Okay. Depends on the temperature. We'll, we'll use the temperature probe first. And we'll... <laughs> Connor, all the Oasisia uh, have a similar type of symbiont that has um, co-evolved with it, but each individual worm does not have its own unique uh, symbiont. So there is a specific type of bacteria that has uh, evolved the ability to form this symbiosis with the animal. Um, and if we collect multiple species of these uh, different Oasisia, they all will have the same uh, genotype of, of symbiont in it. And so if we sequence the, the genomes of those organisms, they look very similar. Yeah, let's look for a place to core. Probably in the flats somewhere. Yeah, I think I think so. 
I mean, not so far away, but we'll, we'll just see in the, the flat sedimented area, probably off the slope, if we can find some bacterial mat. Hey, John, yeah. is there a place with bacterial mat that you've seen that look like they're on the, the flats? Um, so I mean around the Matterhorn? Or? Yeah, around the Matterhorn. Uh, from the previous stuff or for today? From the previous. I don't know. Uh, could you grab the iPad? Let's take a look quick. We're looking for that. We're looking, yeah. There's a mat down here, right? There's a mat down here, right? You see it? Try not to use the camera while it's going. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You say mat to the right. You have to go. Say that? <laughs> so you said mat to the right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty pretty little. Simple answer, Victoria, is huh? no. Okay. Except that um, we were just looking at the sample photos from last time, and I think we were right here. Um, is that where we took? Her, show her that picture. Is that where we took the sample? Oh. <laughs> yeah, could be. Uh, uh, scroll up, Victoria. Is that where? There, Rebecca, no, the other way. So we can see the caption on that image. Oh. First degree, not clarified. But we're not, uh, we're, we're right at the base oh, of no. Matterhorn here. Oh, here, there's a picture. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Well, we could, we could, uh... Yes, maybe it's not even this it. Or maybe this caption is wrong. Maybe. Can we mark this spot and then we'll, we'll just pan around. Let's see. But yeah, there's not much. Yeah. Which may be why in why we didn't get it. We didn't get any, and then we continued to to right. Diane toward Diane's bend and got yeah. the stuff to the north of the Matterhorn. Okay, so maybe don't. Maybe we'll. I'll change. Sorry, I've changed my mind. Um, maybe let's let's see if we can use the temperature probe and see how deep. Right. Yeah, in in the mat on the edge. Right yeah. Right yeah, I I sort of remember that too. That there wasn't we did, there wasn't we a did whole searching, lot, but if yeah. we you know, so if this works, so we should definitely record specifically that. Uh,
All right, so we're, we're going to try to also take, if it looks good, we'll take a couple of cores in there. So wherever we probe, we don't want to so poke in the middle. Park, the edge, yeah, you know. one of the edges, if you can do that. As, as deep as you can. <laughs> okay. About right here, so. um, maybe a little bit in, so it's actually in the mat. Oh, yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. That'd be great. Maybe to like pause at certain depths or just yeah. Depth? At f five, if you can get to five. Okay. Okay. So we're measuring 3.5, 3 3.7, 3 3.8, 4, okay, now we're at 5. Does it feel like it's pretty soft? soft? Fantastic, okay. So let's hold it there, so 7. 7.5, 7 point, 7.6, this is 10 centimeters. What was the temperature at 5 centimeters? It was 4.5. 7.9, 8.1, 8 8.2. Eight point one. Um, hold for one a little bit. 8.2. Yeah, I think 8.2 is good. So we can go again. Yep. Okay. 10.1. 10.8. One point four, one point seven, twelve, twelve, eleven point seven, twelve. All right, and go the next. Can you? Is it possible to? I don't know. Okay. How do you want it? Do you want the tip going down, or do you want it to rotate? T tip going down. Yeah. So yeah. Do yep. Angle. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Thirteen point eight. Thirteen fourteen point one. Fourteen point nine, fifteen point one, fifteen one, fifteen two, fifteen point four.
Go with fifteen point four. Okay. Yep. All right, sixteen point seven. Yes. Eighteen point two, eighteen point oh, eighteen point three. Let's go with eighteen point two. All right, can we can we go one more? Let's do it. Or are you hitting bottom? <laughs> Nineteen point two, nineteen point three, nineteen point eight, twenty point one, twenty point two, twenty point four. Twenty point two, twenty point four, all right. Twenty point two looks stable. Okay. That's thirty seven. That's the app. It's thirty seven. All right, we can pull it out. Yep, thank you. And then since we have it in hand, we'll do the same thing on the outside of the mat area. All right. So if I, is it easy for you to get it in this area here? Or what's what's or is further back? What's what's easiest for you in terms? Yeah. Over there. Okay. That would work. Let me uh, just make sure there's no clams or. Live clams, that is. Looks like it's mostly hash. All right. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, there is a live clam over there in the corner. Yeah, we can do this. That's that's great. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Try to... Yep. All right, it's two point one. <laughs> All right, let's let's go in five centimeters. Okay. 
I don't think we're. It's. Three views in the high temp. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think for tomorrow. All right, 2.3. Point six, two point five, two point eight, two point six, two point eight, two point nine. Yeah. <laughs> there is a there is a live clam up in the see the siphons there. I do. Yeah. 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 So it's not a completely yeah. clam hash. Oh, the Zora said it was helping. Checking you out. Yeah, yeah. Give it a little. Note. All right, we can go in another, another five. Three point five, three point seven, three point eight. Four, three point eight, four, four point one, four point oh, four point one. I haven't been looking at the slack. Okay. 4.1. Go with 4.1. Alright, then go another 5. Five, five point one, five point three, five point six, five point seven, five point nine, nine, six, six point one, six point zero, oh, six point zero. Oh. Right now, six point two, six point two, five point nine, six point two, six point two. Point oh, six point two. Okay, let's go with six point two. All right, proceed. Is he still doing the, his uh, life link? Sure. Do you want him to? Um, no, probably not. Anyway. No, we don't. We, no, he, he's eating us. Yeah, he's probably eating my food. Yeah, he might. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen him. That's okay. I don't think he was eating lunch. Okay. So he might still be in the lab. Yeah. Lunch. No, it's fine. I'm gonna. Um, I'm ready. Seven point three. Seven point five. Seven point five. Seven point five. Yeah, if they went for an hour. It would be exactly right now. Huh? If the if the seminar. Yeah. Was it an hour? Unless. Oh. Here just he is. Just we're talking about you. Seven point eight. <laughs> Did you have a chance to eat lunch? Doesn't need lunch. You're gonna give him lunch. Oh, <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> Seven point nine. 
He doesn't need much. Don't worry about him. <laughs> Okay. Proceed. Yes, please. So what I was, what I was wondering, we need, we're going to take some push cores in the mat since we have good penetration, but I was wondering, it sort of depends on timing, like, do we want to do a heat, an actual heat flow measurement here since it seems soft enough, or is this going to be enough? Soft well, it's pretty hard. well, we're we're, I, I we're getting down um, to the to the. Sixty centimeters. No, Rob said it could be shallow. But no, yeah. I can't, I can't yeah, Rob said it could be shallow, but I don't. Can they make it insert it? Yeah, I didn't see when we came in. I don't know what's kind of over it's, that it's, um, so We could try that. Do they need one here? Is this the oh, That's what I'm saying, we're certainly. We're going to do the major system. Looking at the rocks here, I'm going to be worried about it. Just okay. doesn't look right. Okay. okay. All right. I was thinking of it from the temperature, first. like it's, it's not going to, it's not getting up to 60 degrees. Yeah, I, so. This isn't a good place to do it. Okay. Okay. All right, 9.2, 9.4. Nine point four, nine point four. Let's go with nine point four. All right, one more. Perfect. Nine point eight, ten, ten, ten point three. 10.5. Yep. 4, 5, 10.8, 11, 11, 11.1, 11, 11. 11. Let's go with 11.1. All right. We can stow that bad boy and then. And take some push cores. I think we can use the regular polycarbonate given it's not going to melt it. Um, possibly. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's burrito. No, I'm good. Yeah. Actually, um, well, yeah. Right. And then they should they should push one in and leave it in and then take yeah. the other one and then Okay. Got it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Sediment marination. All right, we're just getting ready here to take a few sediment push cores over this 
somewhat modest microbial mat for the microbiologists. They take these back on to sh onto the ship, section them at one to three centimeter horizons, and then they will analyze the microbial community and the chemistry in the sediment in the seafloor. Mine is no. There it is. Okay. Mine is now. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. So apparently there's a microbial mat under us, near us. Let's go see. Oh, it must just be what in front of us. Okay. Yeah. That gray patch. Or maybe the white. You want yeah. The bright white. The bright white. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we get a context photo, Rebecca? Um, there is a clamshell. That's true. Yeah, and up. Yep. You're right. I think it's like a tacoed clam there. Okay. So there's a clam in the way of the brightest. Oh yeah. Uh, but they're gonna. You want back in? Here you go. Okay. And they know to marinate. They call that marinate. Okay. <laughs> Marinate the course. There you got it. It'll, it'll be a little okay. Yep. That's fine. Yeah. Good, good job. Okay. Um, I didn't see what Shkor number. Let's see. Shkor number? It's impressive. Shkor one. Uh, next, next to it, yeah. If you can, if you can get it in the, uh, yeah. If you can get it in here, that would be great. Yeah. Oh, no, it's um, 200, it's 100, 150 for the polycarbonate. Yeah, you might mention that we built it up Oh, yeah. Somebody was asking about the uh, temperature tolerance of the polycarbonate tubes that we're using here. Uh, we, we tested that and we did an empirical test because we're good scientists uh, and we actually melted one at 212 degrees uh, at a vent site called Z-Vent. Uh, it's a little bit north of us here. Uh, but, but they should be stable uh, around 150 degrees Celsius. So for most of what we're doing here, the polycarbonate works fine. We also have some aluminum uh, tube cores that we're gonna use for the most uh, hottest spots.
Yep, go ahead and collect number one. Three quarters of the way full. A little smear of mat down the side. You look good there on this camera. Maybe forward just a couple of to your left. Okay, collecting push cord two. Do I want this one? Yeah, might as well. Short core. Yeah, so, uh, Could we get a third if possible? Yeah, if we can do a third, maybe we can try to see if we can get a full.
All right, our second court was a little short, so we're going to try to collect a third one, see if we have a little better luck. We'd like to have full um, cores uh, in this patch here. You can go, could, could you go further back? Is that possible? Um, like back in there? Can you reach that? Okay, or how about, okay, how about in here then? Let's see. Like right in here, where you are. Yep. 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 Yeah, that's fine. You can. Yeah, it's really compressing. The clams, pesky clams. We'll see. I mean, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, it's also pretty. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Also short, but good. All right, and now we'll um, grab the temperature probe, and I'd like to try to measure the temperature in the holes that we just to see how it compares to what we got from the. Sorry, that's the plan for water. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yep, any of the holes. <laughs> and, like, not touching the walls, or...? Uh, it's okay if you touch the wall. Just, just shove it all the way in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, ten. Nineteen, yeah, that's good. Twenty, twenty point five, twenty point nine, twenty one point five, seven, twenty two, twenty two point four, twenty two point six, twenty two point 
Three point six, twenty three point four, point six, all right, let's go with twenty three point six. going up a little bit more. Okay, if I turn around again, is it going to go up again? Let's see. 23.7 is what we Yeah. Okay. Um, so we can stow the temperature probe. We can, yeah, we can, wherever you want to put it. Do you want to use it? Because you're going to use the temperature probe? Okay, so we'll need it at the top. So are we about to go into that portion? Or are we going to Yeah, or I, I could get one more push core on the outside of the mat. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to do can this you, before we do more temperature probing? We will. Well, yeah, no, we can yeah, do the, the we can do the miskins no after the temperature yeah. probe. That's fine. Right. Um, but we can we? But we do. I think I want to get one more push core in the outside of the mat. Maybe we can get a fuller core. Yeah, like right here outside. Of the yeah. Mat. Yeah. I forgot it's not, they need the arm to trip up and they don't, it's not like the, not like the, 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 the,
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. As long as there's no clamshells underneath again. Yes. Um, no. I think it was a little too, kind of a bit of a weird, but yes, that was a good sign. <laughs> oh, there is it. All right, this is push core number four. Uh, nope, you can pull it out. <laughs> All right, it's good full core. Greg will make the clue on the recovery. Okay. It's Luke's birthday. It's his birthday cake in the yeah. in the mess. And there are brownies that you can eat all of this if you don't travel. And it's his birthday. That's a different kind of challenge. So, if we have the, still have the, the temperature probe, can we shove it in that hole? That one? Yep. Maybe we'll at least get a temperature. Or, or actually, let's let's take a temperature probe in the sediments near the hole rather than. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Somebody was asking what our objectives were for this uh, dive today. So right now we're sampling some of the sediments that are at the base of a beautiful hydrothermal feature called the Matterhorn. And uh, the team of scientists on board for leg three uh, consist of people like me who study the the microbial communities and the, the biogeochemical processes that they influence uh, in these hydrothermal vent areas, uh, as well as um, biologists who are interested in studying the animal communities. And that ranges anything from um, the invertebrate worms that we were seeing uh, in some of the earlier shots, as well as chemosynthetic symbioses where animals team up with microorganisms and so we have this really wonderful interdisciplinary group of scientists out here and we're trying to collect 
samples that uh, fulfill all of our, our needs all from the same place so we can uh, tell a more uh, consistent picture of, of the ecology of these environments. So right now we're collecting sediments in places where we know hydrothermal fluid is likely uh, advecting to the seabed and we can tell this by uh, these chemosynthetic communities that are feeding off of the chemical energy that's coming from deeper uh, underground. And then we're comparing that to areas where we see less chemosynthetic activity. Um, so this sort of muddy bottom where we see more of the dead clam communities. And so we're looking at the changes in the temperature and we're collecting these push cores of sediments that will allow us to look at the microbial communities and the geochemistry um, back in the lab when we get to uh, Caltech. Yeah, yeah, 11.6. We could probably call it at 11.6. Yep, 11.6. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Right. Z, you wanna? All right. I'm gonna turn this over to Dr. Z, who's going to uh, guide us through some vent water sampling using the gas tights and majors at the top of Matterhorn. So stay tuned. So we want to go back up to the top of Matterhorn and set up for water sampling. Start with the temperature probe, try and find the hottest spot, and just do what we did before. But, and I want to start with a major this time. Major. Hello, everyone. Nice to be back and see you all. Um, those of you who were here for dive. Um, 
four, six, seven. Um, we tried to sample the Matterhorn vent. And we got a couple of gas tights fired up there. Uh, we're going to go back and try that again this time, try and get a major element sampler. Um, we just use two different bottles for different purposes. They're both are made of titanium and they can handle the high temperature fluids. But we are now outfitted with the uh, Ramrod 2000. We have a new uh, trigger design. Oh, Ramrod 3000. Oh, we've upgraded already. Uh, so the old trigger plunger was yellow. And that gave us a little bit of caution. Now we're full of head red, and this is going to be a successful water sampling bottle because of the, the new Ramrod 3000. So there you're seeing the Matterhorn chimney. It's about six and a half meters high. Um, first seen in 2015. Hasn't changed much in terms of chimney growth, um, but the temperatures we've measured the top uh, we measured a maximum of 60 degrees in 2015. In 2018, we measured 111 degrees. And on the previous dive, we measured um, 187 degrees. So it definitely has heated up. Somebody was asking you if it's in Celsius or Fahrenheit. In all of our um, temperatures, we give in Celsius. Yeah, I need to see where the, the vents are. This, I think that looks like a pretty good setup. If I remember right, the highest temperature vent is right in there. So wherever you've got a, a good stable setup. Well, we've got to you know, need to iris down a little bit and see where the flow is. Have I got iris control or you, you've got it? Yeah, so this is this looks to me like the, the best place to sample right there. So basically the Ramrod 3000 is just a new piece of plastic that we put onto the hydraulic plunger that pushes the triggers, um, but we changed the geometry on it and it was um, made on board by uh, using a uh, 3D uh, printer that they have on here. It does look pretty different. Yeah. Like somebody sat on it. Like yeah. yeah, exactly. The worms got like so sort of smushed. <laughs> but, uh, but even yeah. before we got here, it looked like that. Do you remember the two poor barbecue sites on the, with this tiny little plume sticking out like and tuned and basalt or whatever? Yeah. 
it's going to walk in. Course out and bring the player off ram in. We're going to slowly bring the ram in. So in the front of the basket, you can see the two different water sampling bottles we're, we're using. Um, the one on the left is the major element sampler, and it's designed to take a bigger water sample. But in particular, the seals on it are meant to be very clean, so we can do trace elements in the fluid. The smaller one is also made of titanium, but it has pressure seals that are good for higher pressure, um, but they aren't as clean, so we use that to do the gases and, um, and just major elements. Are you happy with that spot? You want to go a little bit further? Yeah, so this, this looks like the most vigorous flow up here, right? Yeah, to me that looks like the best place if we can get there. Yeah, if we have to, we can move the ring. Yeah, go ahead. So it's not a game to put the pro through the ring? Um, <laughs> yeah, the ring toss. Yeah, the ring toss. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to put it exactly where you want to sit. Great minds think alike. Um, I, I think we can need to go try can we angle and go down more like this you see what I mean yeah um, yeah we're, we'll have to do the same with the snorkels on the bottle So almost all of the hydrothermal mounds we've sampled here um, are bending fluids at a maximum temperature of 290 degrees and all of those other mounds in, the, in this one chimney are precipitating calcium carbonate. Um, we realized after sampling in previous years that um, this mound seems to be made of barite rather than calcium carbonate, barium sulfate, and that it has elevated levels of uh, silver arsenic and antimony or sorry silver gold and antimony fairly high arsenic but not too high um, and so uh, we have never sampled this until we tried to sample the other day we got a couple of gas types well we want to go back and get a major element sampler so what we want to see is are these fluids the same as the fluids coming out of the other high temperature chimneys or are they different because it looks like this chimney is made of different materials and so we'll try and get fluid samples that we can analyze in the lab and then we'll try and get a rock sample up here so we'll see is this a, a different fluid source all of the other vents um, including the ones in the vent field about a kilometer and a half away seem to have very similar chemistry and why this one is making barite we don't know and we're hoping to get both rock and, and fluid samples to be able to answer that question. In there? Yeah, that looks pretty good. We're climbing pretty quick. So we're 
140 and going up. Yeah, that looks like we're in a, in a good spot here. Let's see what the temperature stabilizes that, but I think that's going to be good for sampling. We're now at 165 and still climbing. So we're getting fairly stable temperature of 167. It's about 20 degrees lower than we measured before, I think. So we could we could try a little back, but um, if this will work for a sample, if we if we can't find anything hotter, this will work. So that looked like a pretty good place to try and get the the nozzles. As the fluid, hot fluid mixes with the cold seawater, it of course cools off, and the temperature gradients are extremely sharp. You could be a centimeter away from the hottest temperature, um, and that little bit of seawater mixing in will cool the temperatures down by 100 degrees easily. So, to get a pure fluid, we want to be in where the hottest fluid we can reach is. And here, there's not a very good orifice to, for like a good chimney to be bending. Um, we're now 170 degrees. Um, looks like we're going to stabilize about there. Um, if I remember right, it was 187. Oh, um, 167. Yeah, yeah. So we're now 169. Okay, um, I'm, I'm good with, with that, if you can get in wherever with the, the 170 was with the bottles. Let's, let's go for it. If we get uh, a little bit of mixing of seawater in with our bottles always, and so we never get pure hydrothermal fluid, but by plotting, um, the composition um, of the fluids versus on a line with seawater, one in the line of hydrothermal fluid. Um, we, for conservative elements, those that don't precipitate minerals, we can get a mixing line and we can extrapolate to what the end member fluid is, even if we don't get a very pure sample. So obviously, the closer to the hydrothermal end member we get, the less that extrapolation is and the, the better the sample is. And, especially for trace elements that are very low concentrations. Um, the dilution with seawater makes it just that much harder to measure them, so we always like to get the, the most pure hydrothermal sample that's available, but um, you have to take the sampling opportunity you have, and this one has rather diffuse flow rather than a very focused vent, so uh, we'll do what we can. Yes, please. When you're happy. I can porch, I can, well, I can bring, I can, happy there, yeah. And I can um, push this off a little bit. So, yeah. I'm push this off.
So we're attempting to grab these. Uh, the robotic arms are shilling robotic arms. They're built by uh, an engineering company that is in Davis. Uh, so I'm from the University of California, Davis, and uh, Tyler Shearling um, started an engineering company there and um, builds these robotic arms. And um, they are um, really finely machined um, instruments. Um,
ain't no worries. As long as we get the water, I'm a happy camper.
think it looks way better. Um, the other thing is, on the bottom there, that, this edge right here, Okay, is there any camera that can see right over here where I'm pointing? There's a, a bent hole right there. So we got a camera that can see over here. No, to see the, the vent. There's a vent hole. If we can't, we'll just go blind. But, but if there's a camera that can see that. You probably won't get enough rotation. Yeah, okay. Right it, it's right where the just beyond where the snorkel attaches to the bottle. There's a vent hole right there where the big nut is, but um, in this geometry we can't see it. It's on the back side. On the back side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where where the snorkel attaches to the bottle. There's a hole right oh, next to it. Thing. Yeah, but if we can't see it, we can't see it. So we'll, we'll just go for it. Talking about like that thing right there, right? The um, no, there, it's it's. It's on the other side of the bottle. See that? Just rotate back a little bit. Right there. Stop. Keep going. Um, go uh, counterclockwise. Stop. See the little black spot? Yep. That's the vent hole. And I, I'd like to see that, but if we can't see it, we can't. So. We might do. Yeah, I, I think the geometry is not going to work. I, I now let's just go. go yeah, we'll we'll just hope for the best.
Yeah, yeah, and there's no venting coming out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we need to move the nozzle just a little bit in towards the chimney, and I think we'll be there. We're, we're just barely flushing right now. Okay, so you want to bring the nozzle towards us or towards No, the toward the chimney. Yeah, just a little bit. I think you're pretty close to the good spot, so. Down there, I think. Okay, now we're getting a little more yeah. venting. Yeah. We're getting a little more flushing. Um, yeah. It's pretty weak flow. We, we should see pretty vigorous flow going out there for the best sample. Okay, we were better before. There, now you're getting, that's better, that's better. Yeah, let, let me, let's let it flush for just a little bit. Are we stable? We're stable, but it slowed down again. I think yeah, it's, it yeah. it starts going, I need to, I need to pause it right before it starts. Okay, but then we have to hold the trigger down until the springs are fully extended, so we want to, you know, be, be set before we do that. Yeah, I think we're we're maybe too far down. Yeah, try and go up a little bit, and so right about in there and down in. Yeah, I think right there. If you go in, I think we'll get more flow. Yeah, we're starting to get a little flushing. I can see. Yeah, a little more. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's stay frozen here. Let it flush just a little bit, and then we'll trigger. Yeah. So do a slow trigger and just hold it until the springs are fully extended. Yes. No. Yeah. We're good. Good to go. Yeah, we keep them more. We haven't triggered yet. Yeah, another. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to go just a tad more because the springs are really not coming out. We we tickled it. Okay, now the springs are extending. Okay, yeah. Just hold this, we're great.
Okay, we're fully extended. I want to just let the bottle cool a little bit, and then we'll let off on the trigger. I'll, I'll let you know when. Okay, we can release. Good job. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think we got a we got a sample for sure, and you know may not be pure. Remember, we got a sample. Thank you. Okay, and we'll try and shoot the gas tight. Yes, please. So that was the major element bottle, and now we're going to go for the smaller gas type bottle. They both work in similar ways. They just um, were designed for optimization of different functions. The, trace, the major element bottle was designed to have really clean seals so we can go do good trace element chemistry on the fluids. Um, but when it comes up sometimes in gassy samples, a little gas will leak out of the bottle, so we can't do the trace gases on those. So, um, Marv Lilly at University of uh, Washington designed a new type of bottle with high pressure seals, um, but they're not as good for doing clean chemistry, but they're great for doing gases. So, when we fire this gas type bottle, it was put under vacuum up at the University of Washington by Marv Lilly. Um, we fired it the when we fired the triggers with the little nozzle in the vents. It will quickly suck in fluids, and the gases will flash out, and then the valve will close, and then the gases will be sealed in there. And then 
uh, at the end of the cruise, we'll ship these bottles back to Dr. Lilly and he will extract them on uh, a vacuum line and, and be able to measure the various dissolved gases. Um, CO2 will be the main gas, it'll be some H2S. We want to know how much hydrogen is in there because it both feeds the bacteria and tells us how reducing the fluids are. And then because this is a sediment covered site and the hydrothermal fluids are reacting with organic matter in the sediment, there are actually uh, organic gases like methane and ethane and propane and some other um, hydrocarbon gases that we will measure in the fluids. And because the microbiology, microbes, um, the ones that make the mats and the symbionts, they're all living off these dissolved gases. Being able to quantify what the gas composition is is important for understanding the biology and um, knowing the, the fluid composition, including the gases, is important for us to understand the hydrothermal chemistry and why different minerals precipitate from different vents at different temperatures. So the whole system is sort of integrated together and uh, the data that I generate feeds into uh, the work that the biologists are doing and, and their feedback from what the microbes are doing tells me about what gases we should be looking at. So um, why we have a multidisciplinary crew on here because nature is doesn't partition herself into little boxes like pure geochemistry or pure biology. Uh, they're all related to one another, interrelated. Yep. So this is what's referred to as precision alignment.
that thing to go facing down in there, huh? It would be best, but um That would be good, yeah. I'm looking right there. And then down from there. It, it, yeah, in a little bit toward the chimney and then down. I think we're still too outboard. So in toward the chimney and then down. Yeah, so that in a little bit that way. Yeah, we're nowhere. We're too far out towards the sub. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're still too inbound. We need to go outboard. Oh, that's that's better. Okay. Um, yeah, I like that. Let's move. Let's look at the trigger, and we'll go ahead when you're ready. Okay, you can release. Yeah, you can release. Now, before we move, let's see where the snorkel is again. Let's see if it's moved. Okay, we look good. All right, yeah, we're done. Yes, thank you guys. That was great. Shana? Yep. You want are you yeah. happy to yeah, take yeah. your niskin just right here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, all three. Every all three? Yeah. Yeah, me too, Lisa. Above to get a or something. Um, Sean said just fire him right here. That's fine. Yeah. Um, before we move along, I would like to, they're planning what to do next. Yeah. Um, I would like to hover directly over the edifice so that I can see the coordinates so that we can compare them on a map. Okay. We will do that. Thank you.
Yeah, you can put it over the trigger if you want. Once the buyer's bottle's fired, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Let me update the dive plan here. Okay. I'm ready for you. So you're still happy to trigger the three Niskins right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So three Niskins right here where we're still on yep. and then come up above it directly above the set coordinates? Yep. Yes, please. Okay, we're going back to Wonderland. Wonderland for a raw. Nice. See? Happy? Happy with your water sample? Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to the way in. 3D's mm. Wonderland was 60 meters due east to 70 meters due east. I think so. Those are 10 meter grids. Yeah, it's like 70 meters. So they can just go back to their follow the track back. Let's see, you do. Yeah. No. I'd say we're 13 meters to the north is the only option. I think that's right. But that actually makes sense from when we were at Wonderland because it seemed like we were we were further north. Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's consistent. Yeah. And I but I think it, it probably is going to change the dive of the Yeah. So our... Yeah. Um, but yeah, anytime we can get a really fixed point, yeah. I would love to do that. So number one has been fired. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Fixed you probably know that, don't you? Yeah. 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 Happening. It's happening now. It's as we speak. <laughs> Your rock three is in quiver one, right? I think so. Uh, no. Quiver. We did quiver two and then. That's me. No, rock three is. Uh, oh, yes, quiver. that's I'm right. I'm sorry. That's I didn't right. see it listed there. Okay. Yes. That's right. Did we get a rock sample from up here when you were putting the right Yes, yes we did. Okay. Yes, very nice one. Oh yeah, Z, we got three really great rock samples to okay. keep yeah. you busy. Yeah, we got one from the top, one from the middle, also. Can you take this frame grab just so we can show people how we trigger Niskins? We are currently collecting water samples, uh, in part to measure the microbial community in the water, but also for incubation experiments we do on board ship. We want to have the in situ water instead of surface seawater since it's quite different here. Nice. Great. Thank you. Let's take a peek here. Checking to see if they tripped. That one of them did not, yeah. What's this one? Or is that number one? No, that's weird. We took one at in the snow in the, the first harbor. The snow yeah. So we're going back over there though. If you if you think it didn't trip, yeah. Hold on a second. Unless that's it right there. Oh, 
So we took one in the snowblower? That was the, yeah. Actually, two definitely did. Four did. Four times three. Uh, it's pretty far over to be. This one's done. It's tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Could it be cocked away from us so we can't see? Because we should you'd either be able to see the bottom of it, right? Oh, or the. Uh, yeah. 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 I agree. To the outside or not? Yeah. I think that would be good to know, yeah. <laughs> Is there something else we can hang from them? I guess you should see. This is going to be a case where missing one failed, didn't trigger, and so we're going to go back over to Wonderland. We're going to have the second missing one okay. over the snowblower, but it will in the in the when the time comes, but you can. It's one is still open. Okay. So it was three. Was actually one. Hmm. So it wasn't three. That was open and it was just missing one. Yeah. One is open and three is not triggering. So we must. But I'm just saying. I think we'll, we might get a another. This will be the chance when we get a second sample. Yeah. Okay. So, no problem. You did your best. We were having a problem this morning and we reset it. We thought it was in front of the closet. Yeah. It's like caught in something down. else. Okay. All right. But two and four tripped? Okay. So, the plan is to hover. Hover directly above. Hover directly above. Thank you. Just checking our coordinates, so we like to use this big chimney as a reference point. I mean big, relatively big. Seven meter high chimney. Oh boy.
Okay, we're going to we're going to Wonderland, which is 70 meters east of us. Uh, that's where we did a, a bunch of sampling. Do you see our little loop de loop down there? Yes, the second marker there. Okay. Um, let's see. I knew I shouldn't trust you. You know what? This First, I wouldn't trust you. The moment I met you. Should we, um, should we want to do a Niskin right over that? Yeah, so we, we do want the Niskin over that snowblower, exactly. We have to redo okay. that. So I lied to you about lying. Because <laughs> they're still there? <laughs> they were just, they were, they were hidden. So here's Wonderland. Yeah. Um, I think these maps are pretty flat, right? Or well, I think that one is. All of this stuff, your best chances are it's probably over here. Yeah, they don't want any more push cores. Oh, okay. They're full of, but but maybe on um, day three. Yeah, okay. I thought that's why we're going back with it. No, they want to rock, and we were going to get, um, we were going to slurp bacterial map. Okay. But that's good. You think these are actually coreable? Yeah, I, this is flat right here. Yeah, this okay. Is a, oh, well, so. Right, so towards the little chim, inactive chimlets? Yeah, they're right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So we're making our way over to a site that we called Wonderland this morning. It's a pretty spectacular little hydrothermal vent. This is how much time we have. Okay. So what do you think of this list? Um, and Niskin one didn't trigger over the mat, over the snowblower. So it didn't? No, it's open. No. So we need to go. So which, which Niskin required? Uh, three got stuck, so two and four. So we're going back over to get a snowblower Niskin. Do you want it? No. That's what we're headed to do. That'll probably be the thing we do. Unless you would rather have a rock or an anemones or a 3D mosaic. Um, yeah, can they do a fly around? Or? Yeah. And then this can, and then. Okay, so no more sample collecting. 3D mosaic and the. Okay. Unless we need an enemy, but I think we won't, it'll be hard to get them in the quiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got a plan. So, Chris, you're perfect for this. Uh, because we were hoping on this little feature to do fly arounds for 3D mosaic. Once we get there. Uh, no, go ahead and do your 3D fly arounds, 
And then we're gonna we'll find there's a little snow blower feature that we'll put the Niskin right over. So ready? I'm ready if you're ready. So we just go at a steady speed. Here we are at Wonderland. I love this little site. It is really cool. my, my new favorite site. I'm going to say that every day, but my new favorite site. This is where the high temperature fluids are, right? Here and here. Where did you sample before? So I'm not sampled just around this side here. Coming around? Oh, yeah, Adam, you were, that's right, you are. Yeah. We're back, back at the A team. <laughs> Fly over for yeah. So maybe, yeah, if we had time slurping in those mats. Do you see any rocks? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, there are there are rocks around. Mm -hmm. um, when we had more time, it was... it's this right here. There's a little bit more, yeah, if you lateral. Gotcha, gotcha. This will be great. Yep. Nice. I think around this little bend. Ah, is, that's the snowblower? Okay, yeah, this is the end of it. And then around, and Greg thinks over the top too, yeah. I think, yeah. If you got another Niskin, would it be over that? Or it's yeah, not quite doing it's it again. Not doing, we need to poke it. Poke it. Okay. Oh, we'll be right back. Alright, and we're back. <laughs> and we're back. We're at Wonderland. Look at this oasis. And that's actually why Oasisia gets its name. The oasis worms. The oasis of life in the bottom of the ocean. Hidden. Beneath the surface. Really, so our sids. I feel like there's more fish here than we I, saw at Matterhorn so also. It's just a little... Yeah, I don't know what possessed you to think you could actually push core. <laughs> oh, actually, um, Z was showing me some sites off even further to the east that might be coreable. All right, that is 360 degrees around this. And then over the top. Yep. Okay. Here. Great. We're getting um, footage here for a 3D reconstruction of this feature. You have to pretty much circumnavigate it at a certain speed and then come over the top at a certain speed and then you can stitch them stitch the video together and get a model hopefully visibility is good enough yeah and i Seems think it can come back up to this a little bit lower a little bit lower okay a little lower around or up the i'll just back over back yeah, the way you come one oh, more yeah. crisscross it again one yeah Criss-cross. Really yeah. Lower yeah. spot. Yeah. It's just not, um, I mean, I'm sure it's still flowing. It's just whether or not it's worth taking a Niskin. Can you really position a Niskin in such a way? We need to poke it. Mm -hmm. Well, I would oblige by getting more anemones. 
Is that how it? Hmm? Is that how we like broke it open? Was sampling for anemones? Yeah. <laughs> well, that turned mm. out good. Yeah, the first time I was scared, I didn't want to pay anything, and I was going to say it's a little less comfortable. Yeah, that other thing, I don't know what it was. Oh, it's a little chimney chimney. Oh, these are the inactive chimneys. That's right. So we've gone too far this way. Okay. I mean, you might as well. This is. These are the inactive ones of Z's. Oh, and this was Z. You were saying to core here, but this looks like some clam fields, clam patches. But there was a little patch of that. Mm. Yeah. Could be core, I believe. Mm -hmm. That core. There we go. Just about right in the sub right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's helpful. Greg was not impressed. Was impressed. He was impressed. Just a little high. Just a little. That is impressive. I feel like it's something. A bag. Is it a plastic bag? We'll find out later. Human. Human impact? Is everyone think this is a plastic bag? Yeah, we saw it before. Oh, okay. So we have seen a plastic bag on the bottom of the ocean at 3,800 meters depth. Well, 3,700 meters depth, excuse me. Um, just amazing the influence humans have on this planet. Yes. Did not say. Okay. Now we're happy with the height here. <laughs> So you see, Rebecca, there's a human impact button? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, got, it. got it. These are amazing. What's up with the different um, qualitative textures of the mat here? Well, if we could sample it. I know. You want to, I mean, so similar to like vacuuming? The, the grayish and uh, lighter color. Do you actually get so mad in the canisters if you... Suction gently or no? In one versus the other? Not really. Okay. Because you don't think they're big enough, yeah. big enough filaments to get them? Yeah. Yeah. And if they stay intact. Look at all these anemones. These are amazing. Just so symbiotic. They're in, I think, a There's higher a flow area. You can see, look at the orange. Yeah, the oasis. orange oasisia. That's that's what we yeah. look for now, yeah. Suffering. The orange oasisia. Okay, what's our priority? I'm gonna, I got one more little pass that I right Yeah, I gotcha. Just a second. Okay. For you. Did you see a snowblower that's worth the niskin, or do we want to just I mean, have trip, to, like, trip water? The guys can bump it and see if it'll... Well, then I think in that case, we might as well just try for a grab of anemones. Hope or create a, a geyser. And put it in, put it in, in a quiver. Uh, quiver. I mean, if you okay. if you grab where you think your snowblower is... Because I was just thinking, unless we get a rock that's small enough to fit in a quiver, I'd have yeah. to contaminate the mm -mm. boxes. Mm -hmm. I say that maybe that's the best course of action. So let's try to break loose a snowblower by grabbing some more of the anemones. Is that all right? Or would you rather slurp? You could also try it with the, the nozzle. Break open a... But then you'd have to raise up and... Yeah, this is exactly where we sampled. We sampled right here because I remember that little fun little clump. Orange mm -hmm. We do temperature. Yeah. All right, that is the entirety of the feature. What do you want? Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Okay, you want to try fun. in six minutes and then okay. fire the niskin. Okay. The far side. Right here. So I see a little white thing on the right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, I think. Just, mm -hmm. I didn't see any. Next batch. I saw. I saw. I think we're gonna have to poke it to create a snowblower event. So we're going to talk about how we want to do that. <laughs> but you could get positioned over there. So we're grabbing? Or are we su suction sampling? Um, whatever. Whatever you want. 
Let's go see. I know. I know. And you think it's faster to section? No. They have to I do grab think it's faster it. than to, to section, yeah. Well, they have to grab the sections right now. We could ask them. Their choice. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. Alright, where would you like to set up? Well, so let's see. Mm, um, yeah, so. I don't. Uh, no. Did you use scoops on leg two? No. Oh yeah. Where Victoria? Uh, yeah. Here, this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not uh, blowing anymore. So what we thought we could do is take a grab of tube worms with anemones and create a snowblower. Because that's what happened last time, right? We poked around and then it started oh, snow blowing. Um, you gave me a side eye, Chris. Poked around and I think that it kicked up the, the swamp into the stream and then floated up. You talking about this morning? Yeah, I'm talking about this morning. It kept going for a while. It did, uh, yeah. It was a little bit right there. Though. Could you just bump it with your minute? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like right in the middle there? That little white corner. I would go for the. the Where? The white bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover too yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Very top. Yeah. White. So yeah. can you position Niskin one over that though? We can get, it's a, we can get very close. Yeah. Okay. The only thing is, I, I don't like to put the manip in it because it's hot water and the manip's not hydraulic oil. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I could see that. <laughs> How about? You can, you can see the water coming out, right? Now. You can see it coming out, and it, 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 if he flies up into the left field, definitely we can get very yeah. accurate. Okay. Yeah. Want to do that? So we need to bump it first, though. Can you bump it we with the porch? The, I can, the, I can, um, I can put that hooky yeah. thing out there. Okay. Yeah. Do the, yeah. <laughs> put the hooky thing out there. Yeah, swirl them around. <laughs> just, just nudge them. Don't, don't hurt them. Yeah, giving them a little nudge. You can. Do you want my camera? You can take my camera. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Just give a little view down. And I do think that you don't have to poke them. You can poke the the clump, like below them. They'll. Just like below and kind of loosen some fluids. Loosen some fluids. I'm panning left. That's okay. Yeah, there we go. Loosen some fluids. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, there you you released it. Okay. That's what they want. All right. Let's. Uh, perfect. Yep. All right, trigger. Whenever you are ready. It'll be one. One didn't trip before. All right, can you follow him over with the camera? Yeah. Thank you very much. Oops. Yeah. Unzoom or zoom? Unzoom. Sorry, sorry. One, take two. Gotcha. Here we go. Are these in, these are in the way, aren't they? <laughs> These new push cores. So this is how we trip these Niskin bottles. So they close, they clamp shut with a bunch of, how much water? Six liters of water. Let's see. And then we pan up with my camera or your camera? Me? I'll look. So we're, yeah, we're double checking. Um, there's some lights. I think it did. It's closed now. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. I know we have one and a half minutes, but how do you feel like about a clump of tube worms into a quiver? We don't want to contaminate our rocks. Okay. Deal. Whoops. Sorry. I'm so sorry. With. Oh, God. 
Do you, uh, Am I doing that? Okay. You really need it. Nobody want. Right. I'm just, I'm just wondering, time wise, like we don't yeah, want to. They're fine. But we can't do it every day. Okay, well. So we're going to pull two or two thirty. Two fifteen. Two minutes. You think we'll only go over? Yeah. Um, go discuss. Yeah. Go discuss. Here, I'll. Okay, so we're going for not that many, but mostly anemones. Well, are we... Chris, how do you feel? Are you settled? No, I'm not. Yeah. I, I could settle. I just have to figure out what's going to happen. So right in front of the monkey fists are quite a few anemones. Can you reach that far? Like right here? Yep. Yeah, I'm kind of going in blind, but... Yeah. Poor child. I can pour chance to give you a better view. I mean, it's gonna be fine. It, we can't. Oh, look we can't. At all that mat. I know. Bacterial mat. <laughs> Going in blinds, okay. Because okay. I think there's quite a few. Yeah, there you go. Yep. You might get some mat, Victoria. And you know, too many will have a big problem at the quiver, but. Yeah. Okay, that looks nice. Oh, that's great. That's great. So, possibly quiver seven. Possibly. Well, you know. <laughs> no, we've just been working in the deep sea for decades. We know. We know not to count on it. We don't even write it down until it's in there. Just like we don't write a dive number before we're in the water, you know, we're superstitious. Do we have a down facing can? Those little, one, those little ones are so perfect yeah. for the incubations.
I know. It's hard. Trying to give a cat as far as they can. Is that worse or better? That's fine. They're gonna float away. They're gonna float away. They're gonna float away. No, we can't put them in there. But these are just tubes, right? There's anemones. There were. There I know, were. But, but there's. Huh? There's one. Yeah. And then there's one on the end there. Oh, yeah. They, they're, I think once we moved, it was gonna, that was gonna happen. They're, gonna, they're really, they're lightweight. I don't, I don't know. I don't think nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably better next time we just set up nice. Yeah, okay. Alright. Sorry. Alright. Uh, do you want to just hang on to this in the arm? Oh, yeah. Um, sure. I mean, do you want to shove it in there just to... They, I don't think it? they can. No? That's it's not going in. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Oh, there's one on there. Is that one? Is there one right there? Uh, do you think that there are some anemones? There's one, the there's one right there. Really? Yes, Look. I was looking with No, I know. I just don't think they can get it in there. Oh, I can get in there. We just got to set down. Oh, okay. Because it's so light. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, It's just go down gently because Z also thinks there's three already in seven. Yeah. And they're going to come out. I think they stayed in. So I'm a little worried about... Well, that's true. We just, can just close it. it. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't see them go in. I didn't see anything go in, but uh, did you see some? Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw three go in. Okay. The, okay. You know, the bottom two bones that went into the jar. Were three can you stick the one you're holding with this anemone side in? Or no? And then just close the lid? That. Oh, it's pretty long. Yeah. Yeah, it's impossible. How are you feeling? I don't think. I, I saw them go below the jar level. I never saw them come no, back out, so I think they're in here. Okay. Okay. Right. Why don't we just shut it? Yeah. We're done. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Make a bend. <laughs> Let's do this. Those yes. are both will be. Yes. Yeah. They are lightweight. Yeah, but we also have the other one. Nicely done. Let's do this. Maybe, maybe. It's oh, a tricky task. Everyone watching should remember that the pilots are making this happen with a robot 3,600 meters away <laughs> on the seafloor. Pretty amazing. Coming up with some clever manipulations. It's actually it's Adam. it's Adam here. It's not J Rod. It is Adam, and he can do it too. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, just hang on to this one. Yeah, don't. Yeah, okay. It'll, it'll All right. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right. It's a wrap. All right. Everything's sealed. Nothing's in four.
So just seven. Okay. Everything's good. Yeah. Everything's buttoned up. All buttoned up. Buttoned up. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Really great dive. Be lots of great samples tonight. Yeah. We are coming off bottom, so it should take us about two and a half hours to get to the surface. Yeah. We will we'll let you all see the rest of the ascent. Otherwise, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.